Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloud Sync. In today's session, we'll take a look at Microsoft Managed Policies within Conditional Access. Mentioned in the Microsoft Defense for Report 2023, we look at the ever-expanding threat landscape, the application of zero trust principles, as well as how we can secure our state up to 99.2%. If we scroll down on the executive summary, we can see Microsoft's unique vantage point in terms of security, the amount of money they've invested into security and the ecosystem, as well as the signals remediated, the amount of security and threat intelligent experts they've adopted, and the amount of partners in the current security ecosystem, as well as advocation of the security systems. If we scroll down further, we've got a whole section on how we protect against 99% of attacks. A couple of these principles are derived from um, defensive depth uh, applications, as well as the zero trust principles, which is always verify, always authorize, uh, sorry, always authenticate, always authorize, um, as well as least privileged for our role based access control, okay, across our customer estate. That could be Enter ID, that could be the Azure Management Portal, as well as always assume breach. If that's reduced our blast radius, okay. Segment access, reduce lateral movements across our estate. Um, and if we look at it from a high level perspective, it's around enabling multi factor authentication through conditional access, uh, moving away from per user multi factor authentication, and uh, as, as well as moving away from security defaults, which is more focused at free tier licensing orgs. We then look at applying zero trust principles, which I've went through as well as advocating the use of XDR, so our extended detection response system for our client machines, protection of our client machines through Microsoft Defender for antivirus or attack service reduction rules, and keeping our systems data up to date, as well as protection of our data and governance around our data. So that's why security. If we go back to Microsoft Entra Admin Console by navigating to entra.microsoft.com, we then want to access conditional access, in which we can access conditional access in, in two ways. We can either, on the left-hand side, select protection, and then select conditional access, or we can search in the search bar conditional access policies. For simplicity, we're just going to select conditional access, in which will take us to our overview blade um, and policy snapshot for conditional access policies itself. We then want to select policies, in which you may or may not have noticed there is now an option for Microsoft Manage Policies in which we have zero out of five policies enabled for this org tenant, or zero out of five policies deployed to this org tenant. Microsoft are currently uh, completing a phased rollout of these Microsoft managed policies to exist in Entry ID P1 and P2 customers. I have three to four different tenancies in which I uh, complete demos on and create this technical content for you guys, in which I haven't seen any Microsoft managed policies deployed. However, they are currently in the process of, of, of doing so. So in terms of Microsoft managed policies, if you think of it like this way, you know, we're, we're migrating away from legacy per user MFA, um, as well as SSPR to a new converged authentication methods blade, in which we have options for system managed authentication. Um, if, you, if you haven't heard of system uh, managed authentication before, as and when you sign in and you select a configured system managed authentication from a backend perspective, Microsoft, Microsoft will decipher the authentication strength you use to sign in. Same principle here, but for Microsoft managed policies, okay, Microsoft are rolling this out to enter ID P1 and P2 customers and enforce the conditional access policies on your behalf after 90 days after 90 days of um, the policy being in a report only state. Microsoft has launched three, three separate policies in which I'd love to show you, but none of them have been deployed to my tenancy of yet. However, I can give you a good indicative on, on what they're going to look like. So one of which is MFA for admins access in the Microsoft admin portals. This policy covers 14 admin roles that we consider to be highly privileged who are accessing the Microsoft Admin Portals group and require them to perform multi-factor authentication. This policy targets Microsoft Entry ID P1 and P2 tenants where security defaults isn't enabled. So if you're not a, if, if, if you are uh, currently using security defaults, this will be enabled on your behalf after 90 days and if it's in a report only state. However, if you're not using security defaults at this point in time and you're, and you're currently using conditional access, great, uh, no action is required from yourself. Um, however, to check if you're using security defaults, you can select identity and you can select overview and then you can select the property pane and scroll down to security defaults.
If it's greyed out, then of course you're using an alternative method of uh, enforcement of uh, MFA. <coughs> we then have MFA for per user multi factor authentication. Um, this policy covers use uh, with per user MFA. Um, once again, not recommended. We recommend conditional access. Uh, these users are targeted by conditional access and required to perform MFA for all cloud apps. And this policy uh, specifically targets much of the Enter ID P1 and P2 tenants where security defaults aren't enabled and there's less than 500 uh, legacy per user uh, users enabled. And then third and finally, we have MFA and re-authentication for risky signings. This policy covers all users and requires MFA and re-authentication when we detect high-risk signings High risk in the case means, uh, so, you know, atypical travel, travel that isn't normal, password spray attacks, um, and it works to conjunction with identity protection. Therefore, you do need to be an Entry ID P2 uh, customer, and you need to be covering all users with that Entry ID P2 license. So that's the three policies. You may have noticed that it does say out of five, Microsoft will be expanding those those policies, um, you know, um, for, throughout time. So one, once more, if, if you were to manage these Microsoft managed policies, you do need to be a conditional access administrator or, or a global administrator. However, we will work off the, the approach of least privilege, so conditional access administrator would be recommended. Um, and you as an administrator um, can amend the, the state of these policies from on, off, or report only. Once again, you're able to decide whether you want these policies on, these system managed policies on, okay, in which you can do within the 90 day time frame. You can decide whether to have it off, okay, um, which is fine. You may be using alternative mitigation. You may already be using conditional access policies, and you can decide whether to have it in report only. If it's in report only after that 90-day span, Microsoft will enable it on your behalf. So just, just think of it as if it's in report only, it's enabled, and Microsoft will enable it on your behalf. Recommendation is to exclude a break-dash glass account in these Microsoft managed policies as and when they are deployed. And um, after they are enabled, uh, we are able to look at the insights and reporting and look at the behavior of these Microsoft managed policies, as well as um, accessing the, the Microsoft Entry ID sign-in logs and clicking the conditional access pane on the authentication and uh, yeah, uh, re reviewing the sign-in logs to just making sure it's right for your organization. Um, other than that, there is a Microsoft doc in terms of uh, the Microsoft managed policies within conditional access, uh, pretty much um, explains what I've just I've just explained to you guys, however, it does provide um, several screenshots on what these Microsoft managed policies um, look like in essence. Um, once again, as and when these Microsoft ma managed policies are deployed to my, uh, my, my tenancies, my, my customer tenants, um, I will uh, create another follow-up video uh, in which we'll go through the policy in, in a bit more detail. Uh, but any questions in the meantime, please do let me know. Um, and thank you very much.